Hey guys welcome to Web Dev Cloud. Today in this video we are going to see the Lambda functions along with its options. So let's get started. Here we are in the AWS console. Let's search for the Lambda from the search here at the top. Click on the Lambda from the listed option and it will redirect you to the page where you will have interface to create the Lambda function. Click on this button that says create function in order to create a new Lambda function. Here are some options to create the Lambda function. First is, author from scratch, you are going to choose this option when you need the function to have custom code for your specific purpose. With this option you need to choose name that describes the purpose of your function. Next, you are going to choose the runtime which is the selection for the language in which you are going to create your function. There are popular set of languages is available as a drop down item such as Node, Python or Ruby from which you can select one that suits your need. Last you can select architecture of your function. The instruction set architecture of a Lambda function determines the type of computer processor that Lambda uses to run the function. Lambda provides a choice of instruction set architectures. x8664 is 64-bit x86 architecture, for x86 based processors. x8664 is the default architecture. 1 is ARM64 is 64-bit ARM architecture, for the AWS Graviton 2 processor. Second option is, use a blueprint. A blueprint provides sample code that shows how to use Lambda with an AWS service or a popular third-party application. Blueprints include sample code and function configuration presets for Node.js and Python runtimes. Blueprints are provided for use under the Amazon software license. With the blueprint option, you need to select the blueprint function name that is either built in Node.js or in Python. Each blueprint function is predefined function to perform specific task. Next, you can provide name of the function according to its purpose. Then the runtime option underneath is depending upon the function you have selected and it comes with default x8664 architecture. Also, with this option, you get pre-configured code written for your chosen function which you can change once you create the function. The third option is container image. AWS Lambda with container image allows you to run Lambda functions as Docker containers. With this approach, you can package your entire function code, including any dependencies, as a container image and upload it to Amazon Elastic Container Registry, ECR, or another container registry supported by AWS. With this option selected, we need to provide name of the function, the container image URI and some other related parameters. For now let's skip this option for now. We will have separate video for this option in order to understand it better. For now, let's stick to the first option. Provide name of the function along with the runtime environment. And click on create function button. It will take a while to create a function. Our function has been created and this is the sample code that was being created along with the function for the chosen runtime. We need to click on button test in order to run this function. Then in pop up. We need to fill the necessary details like name and so on and click on save. Again we need to click on test button to execute the function using the event we just configured. And here on next tab we can see the output of our function. Here we need to remember that whenever we make changes into the existing code, we first need to deploy the existing change before testing. So we can click deploy and here we can see the new output of our code. Lambda gives the provision to upload pre-existing code, so from here we are having two options to upload our code that might be residing inside our local machine or inside S3 bucket of our AWS account. Next, let's see some more options. First is code. Code is technically the editor-like feature that allows you to write, deploy and test your code using pre-configured event. You can also load your code from local or S3 that we have just seen. Second is test. Test is the feature by which we can create event to execute our Lambda function. It is the same event that we created before testing the function. You can also pass payload in the form of JSON inside your event JSON. Third is Monitor. Monitor option lets you track your Lambda functions from different perspective. First option of Metrics will log different parameters of your function in the form of charts, such as invocation that illustrates how many times your Lambda function has invoked. Duration says what time it took to complete the execution. Error count and success rates shows the percentage amount of error or success of your function. Second option under monitoring is logs. AWS Lambda automatically captures logs from your function and stores them in Amazon CloudWatch logs. 
You can view your function's logs in the Lambda console, or by using the CloudWatch Logs console. Third under monitoring is traces. AWS Lambda supports distributed tracing using AWS X-Ray, which allows you to analyze and debug your Lambda functions by providing end-to-end -end visibility into your application's request flow. With X-Ray, you can trace requests as they travel through your application, identifying performance bottlenecks and other issues. We'll see X-Ray in separate video. Next is configuration of the Lambda function. Configuration is having some wide number of important parameters which will be explained in upcoming videos, so let's move to the next in the list. Next, let's understand versions first. In AWS Lambda, a version is a snapshot of your Lambda function code and configuration that you can publish and share with others. You can use versions to manage and deploy updates to your function code without impacting the production version of your function. Let's publish a new version of our Lambda function. Just click on Publish New Version button and provide name of the version. The newly created version will have separate code, test and configuration management along with new ARN assigned to it. Next, let's see aliases. An alias is a named pointer to a specific version of your Lambda function. Aliases allow you to route traffic to different versions of your function without changing your application code. When you create an alias, you specify a version of your function that the alias points to. You can then use the alias ARN in your application code to reference the version of the function that the alias is pointing to. You can also update the alias to point to a different version of your function at any time. In order to create alias, click on the Create Alias button. In the screen specify name and description of the alias. Then select the version from the drop-down you want to point with your alias and click on Save and your alias will be created. Once you've created an alias, you can use its ARN in your application code to reference the version of your function that the alias is pointing to. You can also update the alias to point to a different version of your function. So that was it for the Lambda function in AWS. If you like this video then kindly consider subscribing the channel. We will see you in the next video. Till then have a nice time.